Sorry if you can hear my fan. It's incredibly hot outside and I cannot turn off my fan for my recording because I would probably sweat to death. Anyways, I've noticed that a lot of people don't know how to use GDB and specifically from the command line. So this video is just going to go over that. On our left side, we have some code which does nothing but will work perfectly for my use case. And on the right, we have a terminal window where we'll use GDB. Now I'm not going to go over like every command in GDB because even I don't use every command in GDB and maybe there's some people out there that use every command but for my video I'm not going to go over everything because it's overwhelming. Now before we start, when we compile our code we have to do something very important. People forget this and wonder why GDB is not working. We use the dash G flag whenever we compile this tells the compiler to put in the debug symbols in the final executable. To actually debug our program, we can do multiple things. We can either do gdb and do the file command with the path to the executable, or we can do gdb main to open up the file, to open up the executable into gdb, or we can do this last one, which is pretty important when you have command line arguments. We can give multiple arguments into the actual command so when gdb loads it it loads it with those arguments for the sake of our video we're just going to do gdb main like that now the first command i'm going to teach you is called break however before i actually do this command you have to understand that in gdb there are a lot of aliases to one command so break b-r-e-a b-r-e BR and B mean the exact same thing. They make a breakpoint at a specific location. Now the location can be specified in multiple different ways. You can specify the function, like main. You can specify the line number. You can specify the file and the line number. For this case, we're just going to do, well, main. And we're going to make another breakpoint at line, let's do 13. 13. Like that. Now to run the program, we do run or R. We can ignore this, it's going to enter. And now we've ran the program and we've hit the first breakpoint. Now what we can do is we can do the continue program to run the program until it either exits or, sorry, completes or runs into an error or hits another breakpoint. We can also write continue as just C. As you can see, we hit our second breakpoint. Now let's run this program again. We can do R and we can do yes here to restart it basically from the beginning. Now what we can do is we can do the next command to run the next like line of code. Or we can also do N. Now typing N every single time is annoying, so GDB allows you to just hit enter to run the previous command. Now that we've hit our breakpoint, we can actually step into the function. We can do this with a step command or S. And now we can do another command either to do N to complete the function or we can actually do finish, which will exit the function. Basically, if we've stepped into a function, it'll run the code and step out. Or I think step out is the best word for it. We can do finish and we get out of the function. As you can see, it's also printed func since we that's what we told it to do. And we can do next as n and finish the program. Now, before I end off this video, I'll do one more command, which I think is very important. We can do n and n, just to skip over that. And we can do info variables. This shows every single global function, sorry, global like definition. This isn't really great because it's just too much information, but we can do locals. This will show the local variables in the current scope. We can also do PA to print. We can also change the format by doing slash and a bunch of different options. We can look at those by doing help X, octal, hexadecimal, decimal, unsigned decimal, T, F, A. You get the idea. Let's do P. I don't know, uh, T, 
and let's do A. That's the binary for it. That's the binary for B. We can also do stuff like point arithmetic and stuff. And also, by the way, if you've set the format, it it will usually, if we do slash here, it'll return back to the previous format, like the default format, but P generally will do decimal from, if I recall correctly. However, we can do, or actually the appropriate format that it should be doing, because if we do percent A, it'll show it as hexadecimal because it's an address. We can do a bunch of stuff, like we can dereference it, we can re-reference it, and a lot of stuff. We can do size of on A. We do size up on the address of A. Loads of stuff. It's honestly a lot of fun. We can also do this. Get the address of main. A lot of stuff. Super cool. And this is probably one of the most important commands because it can show you what the values are inside and make life a lot easier, especially when debugging. And a lot of the same actions that you do in C, like dereferencing, referencing, all that stuff, casting, you can do that. Now another command that you can do is info args, which shows the arguments passed in. Well, in our case, we don't really have any. You can add some in there. Let's exit the program. And let's do, I don't know, GDD main. Oh, sorry, I forgot to actually compile it. Now, as you can see, it actually shows you the arguments here. But if we want to see them, we can do info args. As you can see, we see the arguments. Let's do p arg v. Let's do like this. Well, we can also do this. We can actually pretty much like in C, we can index through it and see all the arguments we got. Well, we can exit the program from now because they have explained the basics of GDB. And now I believe that whenever you have a bug in your C program or you can't have, you don't have access to, let's say VS code or something like that, or you just want to learn how to use GDB from the command line, I believe that you have the basic knowledge to be able to do that. And if you guys would like me to make a part two with more, let's say complex or more in depth on GDB, I would love to do that. But this is just a basic introduction and I hope you guys found this video helpful.